Hello and welcome back to my channel uh, dedicated to World War I memorabilia and uh, World War I items. So uh, today I wanted to uh, show you a French cavalry helmet uh, for Dragoon uh, Trooper. Uh, this one is a model 19 1874 uh, helmet, French cavalry helmet. Uh, so what distinguishes a Dragoon helmet from cuirassier helmet, which were identical is simply that on dragwood on um, cuirassier helmet you will have a little piece of brass on top here where you can see like the, this little hole and with uh, some uh, hair uh, red hair uh, coming out of it uh, whereas for the uh, dragoon you do not have uh, this uh, little uh, piece of brass and uh, those uh, hair coming out of it called oupet in french uh, so as you can see as well they are the exact same uh, actually uh, this one is a uh, dragoon helmet but there is a hole if you wanted to put uh, this uh, i mean in case it would have been it could have been transformed into a, a cuirassier helmet very easily and normally what is missing is a little screw that would uh, originally uh, plug the hole uh, that has been missing um, well, time passing by so if you look at it, as you can see, it's a very uh, reminiscent of uh, the uh, Napoleonic time helmet from the cavalry. It's basically almost the same, just in terms of size and proportion, it's a bit different. But apart from that, it's almost the exact same. Uh, you still have uh, the head of Medusa. Uh, if you look at it, here is the head of Medusa. Uh, Medusa was this uh, mythical uh, creature in the Greek uh, mythology that could uh, transform you into stone if you were to look, uh, look her in the eyes. Uh, so they were put on French cavalry helmets uh, as a kind of a clin d'oeil uh, to this uh, to this myth uh, and to uh, frighten uh, the enemies of uh, France with the head of Medusa. Uh, so it's made in uh, several pieces. So you have a front, uh, I mean a front uh, visor. You have a back visor. Actually, the back visor is made of several metal plates, so one, two, and then you have the main uh, body of uh, the helmet. Everything, of course, that you see that is uh, yellowish is made out of brass. Everything that is grey is uh, made out of uh, steel. And if you are wondering about uh, those black hair, those are actually horse hair uh, from the mane uh, of the, the horse. I hope I pre pronounced it correctly. So basically like the back of the head of the horse. And uh, they were actually uh, on this helmet. It's uh, braided and uh, you have a little uh, thing to, uh, to attach them together. Uh, of course, uh, back uh, in the time it would have been, I mean, it lost a lot of hair. Uh, I, I mean, when I will uh, lift uh, this, uh, this, uh, this helmet, you will see that probably some hair will uh, remain on the table because it's losing its hair. It's uh, more than 100 years uh, old. So here you have uh, a shin strap. This shin strap is actually made of leather. You cannot see it, but behind it, it's leather and it's covered in, uh, in brass. So uh, in a brass uh, scale. Uh, the uh, top, the simier, the top is called the simier. It is uh, screwed uh, to the, I mean, to the helmet. And then if we were to turn uh, the helmet around, you will see that the interior is leather. So you have the front uh, visor. I'll just make it closer to the camera. So this front visor, as you can see, is made of green uh, leather. Okay. And uh, the back uh, visor is actually uh, covered and it's not made, it's covered in green, green leather. And the back is uh, covered in uh, normal uh, black leather. As for the interior, as you can see, it is again made out of leather. Uh, here it is missing uh, this uh, little uh, uh, thread to actually close uh, those uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, just like in uh, Adrian helmet uh, uh, interior. Uh, and what else? Oh yes, and also, uh, I mean, as you can see, it's not in such a good shape. It's quite uh, fragile. I don't want to touch it too much. But normally, in the inside of those helmets, you will have a stamp. Uh, which is called a reception a stamp and this uh, reception a stamp would actually uh, indicate uh, some information uh, basically like the reception uh, about uh, the um, uh, i mean the helmet when when the uh, helmet was uh, uh, reception at the unit uh, so you, you usually will have the the, the month and year uh, when it was uh, when it arrived at the unit what else uh, some further uh, interesting point on the back of the helmet usually you will have uh, a few indications so here you have a number 778 uh, which is simply uh, the matricule number so this was a helmet uh, matricule uh, 778 here you have a two uh, the two is actually for the unit so this one means that was the second regiment of dragoon or if i was mistaken and at the beginning there was a oupet that has been lost due time it would have been the second regiment of a cuirassier but in this configuration anyway, it is Dragoon. And then you have another number, it's 74. Uh, 74 can either be two things. Uh, either it is uh, the, the year it was made, so 1874, 
or simply uh, the model, uh, because as I said, it's a model uh, uh, 1874. So I don't know uh, which one of the two it is. You also have another mark here. I don't know if you can see. Yes, uh, this mark is for the uh, controller stamp. Uh, so the, the quality control. And finally, you will have the name of the uh, manufacturer at the beginning, which reads GF Guerry and Company. So uh, basically, those uh, helmets uh, were worn, as I said, uh, during, uh, uh, during uh, the, uh, the beginning of the First World War. Actually, during the war, uh, when they were worn, they were supposed to be uh, covered uh, by a cloth uh, to make them uh, less visible to the enemy. Because as you can imagine, uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, steel uh, part uh, will reflect the sunlight. And it was uh, realized pretty quickly, even before the war, that it was not a good idea to uh, go uh, on the field uh, with those helmets not covered. So during the war, on campaign on the fields that will be covered by a cloth uh, to hide uh, the metal parts and uh, during uh, peacetime or on the rear uh, during parades they will be uh, worn like that uh, very shiny and uh, very beautiful uh, one has to remember also that uh, the, uh, the mission uh, of the of the uh, of the um, of uh, this type of unit of uh, the uh, dragoon was also to some extent to make some reconnaissance some scoot uh, scooting of the place so you may not want to be uh, seen too much a dragoon, as you may know, had a, a dual purpose. So it was a mountain, mounted infantry more than cavalry at the beginning in its, uh, in its uh, philosophy. So they were actually uh, foot soldiers that were on horses to move faster to the place where they were needed on the battlefield. And then they would often uh, dismount and uh, fight, uh, uh, I mean, not mounted, dismounted. Um, what else can be said? Um, that's about it. Uh, yes, maybe also another piece of information. So as I said, this was the model 1874 for the Dragoon. Uh, it was uh, worn up until the beginning of the war, up until it became uh, a trench war. So in 1914, Dragoon was still wearing them on their head. They still charged uh, the enemy with uh, those helmets, albeit covered on their head. And as soon as the trench warfare started and there were no need for a cavalry, uh, often what happened is that the Dragoon were dismounted, fighting in the trench, and they would remove the top part of the helmet, the signet, uh, paint those helmets in blue and uh, use them as uh, helmets uh, during a trench warfare before the introduction of the uh, Adrian helmet. Of course, when the Adrian helmet was introduced, uh, they just adopted the Adrian helmet. So that's why you will sometimes find on eBay, uh, whether they are original or uh, replica, uh, it's another story, but sometimes you will find on, at auction on, on eBay uh, those helmets without the top and painted in blue uh, because it some of them were actually transformed that way during the war. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and I'll see you next week for another one. Bye.